And these are my notes to the Fortress of Bookatoo! Who's in charge, who ought to be in charge, and how well are those in charge doing? These are the central questions in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. But it also explores persuasion, the art of getting people to do what you want. You got that, pal? Ah, very persuasive knife that's used to kill Caesar. And the play begins in ancient Rome, where Julius Caesar, Pompey, and Crassus, known as the Triumvirate, had dominated Roman politics for years. But when Crassus died, Caesar, a powerful and populist military leader, raised an army against Pompey's army in a fight for power. Caesar wins. The commoners celebrate Caesar's victory, but the nobles worry he'll declare himself king and overthrow the Republic. Pompey spent his whole life serving Rome, and you cheer his defeat? Persuasion alert! Sorry! Shakespeare portrays the commoners as an easily manipulated mob. He's right! We are! On a victory march through Rome is Caesar, hey, hey. his wife Calpurnia, his closest advisor Mark Antony, his honorable friend Brutus with wife Portia, and his nobles. Beware the Ides of March. <laughs> sooth says, always saying sooth. Once they're alone, Cassius begins to probe Brutus about his feelings towards Caesar. Hey, uh, shouldn't we meet later and talk about this power grab? But I love Caesar, like a brother. Caesar is suspicious of Cassius and thinks he might be plotting something. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Caesar, we love you. Caesar for king. Caesar is riling up the mob. He's out of control. Cassius is already planning to kill Caesar, but he needs honorable Brutus on his side to add respectability to the conspiracy. All right, let's talk. But weird stuff is happening in Rome. Storms rage and ghosts rise from graves. I wonder what it all means. It means Caesar is going to rip Rome apart and we should kill him. Persuasion. Yep. Cinna, gather the crew, then send these fake letters from concerned citizens to the Honorable Brutus to convince him to join us. Brutus is doing some thinking too. Cassius is right, Caesar might destroy Rome. But I can't be an honorable man if I kill Caesar, unless it's for the good of Rome, right? Letter for you, sir. The people want me to take action. All right, guys, let's kill Caesar for the good of Rome. Let's kill Mark Antony, too. No, we're not butchers. Go team! I thought I was in charge. But Brutus is still torn between his love of Rome and his friendship with Caesar. What's going on here? Uh, you can tell me. I'm born of a respectable father and have a high quality of mind. I'll tell you all about it. Later. Thanks for reminding me that women are powerless in Roman society. Wah, wah. And Caesar's wife doesn't have much luck persuading her husband either. Don't go to the Senate tomorrow. I just dreamed you were murdered. Oh my. What say the fortune tellers? Well, they say you're in grave danger. <laughs> Guys, I think I'm going to call in sick to Senate today. If you don't go, the people will call you a wimp. Persuasion. Yeah, I'm Caesar. What could go wrong when I've got my bros by my side? Oh, boy. Word of the conspiracy has gotten out, and people try to warn Caesar, but he's too arrogant to listen. Warning. Whatevs. And once he gets inside... Here's Knifey. <laughs> Et tu, Brute, then fall, Caesar. Hey, look, I'm not happy you did this, but I understand why. If you let me speak at his funeral, I'll support you. No way. Yeah, sure, why not? And the funeral is set for two speeches. Brutus has to use his speech to calm the crowd, so he appeals to their reason. Believe me for mine honor. It was not that I loved Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. Persuasion! Brutus leaves, trusting Mark Antony to keep his word and support him. But instead, Mark Antony fires up the crowd with raw emotion. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come not to praise Caesar, but to bury him. And Brutus may be an honorable man, but look what he did to your beloved Caesar. <laughs> also left you all a ton of money in his will! Cha-ching! The mob burns down the plotters' houses, but soon there's outright rioting, and Mark Antony and Brutus fight to fill the power vacuum created by Caesar's death. 
Mark Antony forms the second triumvirate, made up of Octavius, Caesar's adopted son, Lepidus, a Roman noble, and himself. And they make plans to combat the armies being organized by Brutus and Cassius, who aren't getting along so well. You dare accuse me and my men of taking bribes? It's not honorable. It was for justice that we killed Caesar. My wife just died. Portia had committed suicide under the strain of Brutus's banishment. She swallowed hot coals. But on the bright side, it brought Cassius and a now very stoic Brutus closer together. Octavius and Mark Antony are heading to Philippi. I say we let them try to find us. They'll grow tired in their search and we'll defeat them easily. No, the honorable thing is to go to them and attack. All right. But later that night, he has a vision. <laughs> again at Philippi. You might want to take this as a warning. Ooh. And the two sides meet for the big showdown where they insult each other. Assassins! Schemer! Traitors! Liar! But the time for words has passed and war is the only option. Yeah! Tell Cassius to attack the flank! Brutus's plan doesn't work. Later, Cassius sends Titinius into the battle to report back. Then Pindarus tells Cassius what he thinks he sees. They've taken Titinius. We are losing big time. Mind stabbing me? Caesar, thou art revenged, even with the sword that killed thee. Blah. But Pindarus misinterpreted what he saw, and the tide was actually starting to turn in their favor. Oops. And when Titinius realizes the misunderstanding, he stabs himself too. Brutus knows he's losing, but still tries to inspire his soldiers to act honorably. Stand up, be brave. All right, you'll never capture Brutus alive. Find Brutus! We're cornered by the enemy. Now I realize that I must die. Who will kill me? Anyone? No way, Jose. I'm good. I'll help. Okay, just hold my sword. Yeah. Like this? A little higher. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Antony realizes that the other conspirators killed Caesar for personal reasons, while Brutus did it because he believed it would be for the good of Rome. This was the noblest Roman of them all. Nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man. We'll give him a proper funeral. All right, battle over. Our side won. We're in charge. Yeah! So Brutus hoped to remove arbitrary government from Rome by the assassination, but by murdering Caesar, created a situation that allowed for even more ruthless tyranny. Who are you calling ruthless? Well, hey, it is important for the ruling class to rule properly. What? Are you going to stab me in the back again? <laughs> Politics, huh? 